Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the July 1st worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in the production of this broadcast are Bill and Diane Breen and Casey Jones. Our pianist is Eleanor Gunderman. The opening hymn is number 820, My Soul Now Praise Your Maker, hymn number 820 found in the Lutheran Service Book. Let us rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, I, a poor, poor, miserable miserable sinner, sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We turn now to the intro. I just found printed on our insert, speaking the insert responsibly, whole verse by whole verse. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. The Lord will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to God on high.
with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, during his earthly ministry, your son Jesus healed the sick and raised the dead. By the healing medicine of the word and the sacraments, pour into our hearts such love towards you that we may live eternally. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, is from the book of Lamentations, the third chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes. And let him be filled with insults. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Catechetical Review. Christian questions and their answers. What should we do when we eat his body and drink his blood and in this way receive his pledge? We should remember and proclaim his, his death, death and, and the, the shedding, shedding of his blood as he taught us. This, this do as, as often as you drink, drink it in remembrance of me. Of why should we remember and proclaim his death? First, First so, that so that we may learn to believe that no, that no creature, creature could, could make satisfaction for our sins. Only, Only Christ, Christ, true God, God and man, man could, could do that. that. Second, Second, so, so we may learn to be horrified by our sins and, and to, to regard, regard them as very serious. serious. Third, so we, so we may, may find joy and comfort in Christ alone and, and through faith, faith in, in him, him be saved. The epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians, the eighth chapter beginning at the first verse. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own free will, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urged Titus that as he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. 
I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, and there may be fairness. As it is written, Whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is recorded in St. Mark the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored it earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself the power had gone out of him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing around you? And yet you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house someone, some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And they came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Here ends the Gospel of our Lord. Having heard the Gospel of our Lord, we confess our common Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us men and for and our, for our salvation, salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the singing of the hymn. The sermon hymn is number 571, God Loved the World So That He Gave, hymn number 571 found in the Lutheran Service Book. The sermon text for this morning is taken from the Gospel reading. Jesus said, do not fear, only believe. Thus far the words of our text. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not fear, 
only believe. The words were spoken by Jesus to an anxious, very troubled, very distressed father. His daughter was dying. Jesus spoke these words to Jairus, and Jesus' words have to Jairus the same effect they have on people today. They strengthen weak faith. That's what they do. We know the account of Jairus. We've just read it. We can empathize, most of us, with this father whose child is dying. We can understand such excruciatingly human emotions. Everything inside of Jairus must have been screaming as they were walking to the house. You know, the crowd's pressing around. Quit bothering Jesus. Quit bothering. You're holding him up. Quit slowing him down. I can only imagine even what that minor little delay felt like when uh, the woman touched Jesus' garments and Jesus pauses in the street to have a conversation with her. Jairus inside must have been just at his absolute wit's ends. Everything most likely wanted him to scream, quit it, quit bothering him. Then he hears the words coming from somebody from his house. Your daughter's dead. There's no need to bother Jesus anymore. She's died. Jesus overhears this and he looks at Jairus And he has compassion on the man. Ignoring the servants and everyone around them, Jesus pointedly speaks to Jairus. Do not fear. Only believe. And that's what Jairus does. He firmly trusts that Jesus is the promised Messiah. Clearly he trusts as Abraham did that Jesus could raise even the dead. He believed that Jesus would verify what he had just said, don't be afraid. He trusted that Jesus could do that for him. Jesus has spoken and what Jesus has said would be done. Jairus' faith in Jesus would not be shaken. The faith that Jairus had is like those, the faith spoken of in Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This is the best definition of faith, and blessed is the person who has such a faith. Do not fear, only believe. It's a word of Jesus that goes out to each and every one of us, Christians, all of us who turn to Jesus for help. We are in need of Jesus' words for all too often we experience all manner of tribulation and distress, worry, fear, Grief, sorrow, temptation. All of that while we remain in this wicked and fallen world. We too must endure earthly tribulations, spiritual tribulations. We too have divine discipline brought to bear on our lives. We too are often troubled in our spirits. We too are often downcast in 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 our hearts, but Jesus tells every one of us, do not fear, only believe. When one of us is seriously ill, when the doctors have given up all hope of recovery, when we ourselves are lying on our deathbed with our family around us, crying or desperately trying to hold back their tears, Jesus' words go out to us. Don't be afraid, only believe. If we do what he tells us to do, then we shall certainly say to him, yes, Lord Jesus, I know that you are with me. Thy will be done. And when we ourselves must pass through that valley of the shadow of death, 
We need not fear when we trust the words of Jesus. Do not be afraid. Simply believe. The terror of death is the weight of sin. And it is the sting of the law. But we need not fear either the law or sin. Because Jesus is the end of the law for us. And Jesus is the payment for our sins. Therefore, when the law accuses us, because that's what the law does, it accuses you, it wags its finger under your nose when the law accuses you. When your own sins burden you, and I doubt the memory of them ever really go away, they pop up at the oddest, strangest times there to float in your memory and in your mind. When those old sins burden you, we ought to listen to the word of Jesus. Do not be afraid. Only believe. You know, we approach the services of God's house with the exact same tenacity of faith in Jesus' words. We approach his table today in a fierce faith in the word of our Savior. This is my body. This is my blood for you, for the forgiveness of sins, do this. It's one of the reasons for close communion, that when somebody approaches this table, we want them to be catechized, we want them to understand and know what they are receiving when they receive it. For there are many other churches who say, oh no, it doesn't do anything. Oh no, it is a memory meal. Oh, no, the sacrament of the altar is a good way to remember Jesus, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. In contrast to that, we simply take Jesus at his word. If he says his body and blood is there, then it's there, because it's his word, not our word. If he says the sacrament of the altar forgives sins, then it forgives sins. And if St. Paul says, whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body and blood of Christ eats and drinks damnation on themselves, then that word is valid too. And why would we encourage somebody to bring damnation on their head when they don't understand what they're doing? Therefore, we do ask people to understand what they're doing before they approach the Lord's table. And we want to come in full trust and confidence in the words, my body, my blood, for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this. We come to the baptismal font in that same trust and that same confidence. I was doing some research this week on, a, 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 on another church, church body. And right on their website, I looked up what, did you, you know, what they believe baptism is. right? And they simply said, Baptism is a sign of your commitment to follow Jesus. Completely, wholeheartedly, terribly deficient. And a wrong-headed understanding of what baptism is. How sad, how abundantly sad it is to, 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 to hook yourself to a congregation that doesn't even believe Jesus' words. Because what did Jesus say just before he went into heaven? What did he say? He says, I want you, my disciples, to go and make disciples of all nations. How do you make disciples of all nations? You baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The apostles tell us baptism now saves you. You see, we approach this with full confidence and trust in God's word. Those of you who will be leaving for other parts of the country, jobs, places, elsewhere. This is about truth. It's not about what's zippy and fun and spiffy and everything else. It's about the truth of God's word. And if you walk into a church and they do not believe that the sacrament forgives your sins and they do not believe that baptism saves you, then please be very polite, but don't ever go back. You find yourself a church home that trusts God's word and believes in the sacraments.
because you do not want to hook your eternal salvation to somebody who doesn't believe God's word. Don't be afraid, Jesus says, simply believe. That's it, we're gonna simply believe his word. We're going to trust his word. Trust it. We arrive in our Savior's divine service, not doubting the words that he spoke to his disciples. What do we do when we come here? We don't come here and say, oh, you're lucky to have me, God. We come here just like the man in the back of the synagogue. God, be merciful to me, a poor sinner. That's what we do when we come here. How do we know that our sins are forgiven? We know this because Jesus said to his disciples, he breathed on his disciples, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And whoever sins you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. When you come here, and you stand up and you say, I am a poor, miserable sinner, and the pastor says to you, go in peace, your sins are forgiven. They really are forgiven. God remembers them no more. And that's not based on the guy in the robes up front. That's based on the word of Jesus Christ. Which means your sins are gone. They are as far from you as the east is from the west. God remembers them no more. That's Jesus' word. When absolution is spoken, then you do not fear any accusation of Satan against you, for you confidently believe that Jesus has taken away your sin. By what is recorded for us in the words of the Holy Bible, we come to believe and have faith in what Jesus says will come to pass. What does Jesus say to the young girl? Arise. Simple words, little girl, I say to you, arise. And at the word of Jesus, she sat up. Just like the young man who is dead and being carried out on his funeral bier, just like Lazarus, at the word of Jesus, death is overcome. Death obeyed Jesus and left the little girl. What does that tell you? should tell you that Jesus is mightier than death. Jairus was not put to shame for the trust that he placed in Jesus. No one will be put to shame who trusts in Jesus because the Lord always keeps his promises. So it's not only Jairus who isn't put to shame, but none of those who trust in Jesus will be put to shame. There's Abraham, who was commanded commanded to take his only son and offer him as a sacrifice. Abraham, who could not in his mind reconcile the promise of descendants, as many as the stars, with the command to sacrifice his son. Unbelievers might call Abraham a fool, but Abraham reckoned that God could raise even the dead. Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. The pre-incarnate Christ spoke to Moses out of the burning bush that he should go and demand that Pharaoh let the people of Israel go. And when the people found themselves trapped between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea, Moses called out to God, the same God who commanded Moses to hold out his staff so that the sea would part. The sea parted. Not only do we have these men, but we have the faith of the woman who is listed in our text today. If only I touch his garment, she said, I will be healed. Such deep, abundant faith in Jesus Christ. There was Peter who walked on the water. There is the centurion who asked Jesus to but say the word and his son would be healed. And every single one of the healings that are given for you in scripture, they point you to what you are to do, that is trust Jesus. For whoever trusts in Jesus Christ for salvation will be saved. Then in confidence and in trust, you 
connected to Jesus, look forward to the resurrection on the last day. We all look forward to rising from the grave on the last day. Is it hard to trust Jesus all the time? Yes, it is. It is very difficult. It takes a study of his word. It takes thinking about his word, meditating on it, wrestling with the word of God like Abraham did, wrestling with God the way Jacob did. We wrestle with God. But when we grapple, we trust, our faith is pushed, and that faith is strengthened. And when that happens, When that happens, we too come to the place where we find that we can be not afraid, just believing. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now rise for the singing of the offertory. have heard Pastor Mark Thompson, <clears throat> pastor at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois, deliver the message for this morning. You've been sharing in the Sunday morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois. Zion conducts worship services at 8 o'clock and 1030 on Sunday mornings. Sunday school for all ages is at 920 in our education building. We invite you to join us in person for this worship fellowship and Bible study. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM FM 90.1 or translators at Lincoln and Springfield at 105.3 FM on your radio or on cable channel 5 on Saturday evenings at 5 and Sunday mornings at 10. Science worship services are also available live via the internet at www.zlclinc.org. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. If you would like more information about our school, please contact the school office at 732-3977. We at Zion pray that the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, we so strongly desire to hear you, place our faith in your word. As we are often weak, then we ask you to continually send your Holy Spirit to us so that our faith may increase in such a way that we approach the trials and the tribulations of our lives 
with the trust to not be afraid, but to believe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, hear our prayers as we ask you to comfort Donna Sauer as she mourns the death of her brother Dennis. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that he has gone from this life to the life to come. And we ask, O oh God, that you would comfort Donna, comfort her sister-in-law and their families by giving them your peace and the promise of the resurrection and eternal life with those whom they love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Gracious God, who orders all things to the maintenance of your purposes, as we approach the celebration of Independence Day, we ask you to lead, to guide, and to protect our nation. God, we as a people have strayed from your laws and have often substituted our opinions for your precepts. Hear us as your church repents of its sins, cries out for our people, and asks you to make us a nation humble and obedient to your will. Maintain our country, keep violence, evil people, and bloodshed at bay. Turn us, O God, and preserve us. These things we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. We continue now with the service of the sacrament as found on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me in the same manner also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins 
This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We rise. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith into life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. The closing hymn is number 803, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, hymn number 803 found in the Lutheran Service Book. <laughs>